guys. Hey there, Sean Terry here from flip2freedom.com, and I'm here with my good friend all the way from Virginia, Chesapeake Bay, um, where he's in his beautiful brand new house that he just built um, on a gorgeous lake, and uh, it's, it's just amazing. But river. 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 Oh, river, river. Um, Alex Youngblood, what's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Rocking and rolling, kicking, kicking, yeah. kicking. Super excited! We got the event that is coming up here in less than what 15 days. The event's coming up, and I wanted to do a speaker spotlight because um, first off, everybody. I mean, the last event you spoke, um, and everybody loved it. And they just they thought your content, your information was was just amazing. So we want to talk about today um, what you're going to be talking about. Now, interestingly enough, I was on Periscope. And I asked on Periscope, what is the number one thing that you want to learn about um, for all the Periscope? There's, we had a ton of people that were on the Periscope, people that watched it. And the number one thing that people wanted to learn about was virtual wholesaling. So if you're not familiar with virtual wholesaling, it's when you, let's say for an example, um, you know, Alex is in Chesapeake Bay, Virginia, I'm in Phoenix. But if I wanted to flip a house in California or if I wanted to flip a house in, you know, say Vegas or Dallas or whatever, and if I'm, if I, if I'm flipping a house in another market, Market, or maybe you're in a market right now that it's a very small market and your market's two or three hours away, but you, you're thinking, how can I do this deal? Because I don't live in a big market like everybody else does. How can I do it? So we're going to talk specifically um, about what he's going to be talking about at the event, which is going diving deep into detail on virtual wholesaling. So when you leave the event and you walk out the door after listening to Alex's presentation, you will know exactly what it's going to take to flip a house in any market across the country. Now think about this. What if your market right was all the whole market across the country it didn't matter there was no boundaries it didn't matter if you're you know you saw the house or you didn't see the house or whatever the bottom line is you could flip a house in any market across the country from your laptop which is uh, which is killer um so alex first off let's talk about a result of a deal um that you uh completed completely virtually where you generated you know close to a hundred thousand dollars so t tell yeah. us real quick about that deal yeah, pretty awesome deal actually in uh, a market that's I actually have never been to this market, which is a cool thing. So yeah. uh, the market was about uh, it's probably about three and a half, four hours from me. So uh, so basically, what we did is uh, set up shop, if you will, by taking out a marketing campaign in that area. In that particular area, we did uh, Google AdWords. And we got some leads coming into the system, just like uh, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do. And started going through those leads and having them come into our system in which we've got a virtual assistants who are in place that go through those leads and pull the comps on those leads and essentially get us so we're only dealing with the ones that have the highest probability of being a deal. And that's important when you're virtual wholesaling because you don't want to can't be stuck in deals that aren't going to go anywhere. You want to get to the, the fruit as fast as possible. Right. So, so uh, this particular deal here. Um, so you went Google AdWords. You got a call. You got a lead that came in, and then the leads that uh, they came in. You guys sorted through it. And what was this? What was this seller's deal? What was their story? Okay. So basically what happened was the seller came in, they were asking $120,000 for this property, right. uh, which already was a great deal. Uh -huh. uh, they, they had been through uh, a situation where they had a property that was under contract that financed the buyer was coming in to take over this deal. Mm -hmm. And it fell apart because it wouldn't meet financing regulations. Yeah. And they actually had it under contract for $225,000 with this person beforehand. And when the deal fell apart, they said, okay, now we gotta sell this to a cash investor. Right. So I guess they figured they had to bring their price way down. So their, their deal was this was an estate situation. They were out of it, and they just wanted to move this deal. So key thing to learn here is that you want to be in a position, position yourself when you're in to be in, in the right place at the right time when those type of things happen. Yeah. So by being able to set up shop in a market by either using AdWords or mail, you can do that. So anyway, we got this deal for 100000 uh, 100, 
and we went ahead and found a buyer mm -hmm. for two hundred thousand dollars. Wow! So two hundred minus one hundred is a hundred thousand. Yeah, that, that's that <laughs> stretch of the imagination. <laughs> I mean, we had some closing costs and stuff, so we came around you know a little over ninety-one thousand dollars. But you know, wow. we're not going to cry about that too much. Yeah. Well, you know, the, um, and the cool thing is, and we talk about this you know, all the time, is you never know. It's, it's, it's like I went deep sea fishing in Hawaii, and, we, and, we, and they had all these lines that were going off the back of the boat. And one of the, one of the guys, he, he said, he's like, the, uh, the guy was, that was running you know, the, the, the tour was basically saying, you don't know what's going to catch your line. You have no idea. We can put the bait on there, but you're going to sometimes you could get a whale, you know what I mean? Or you could get a yeah. shark, or you could get a... You know, you could get one of those you know, mahi mahi fishes, or you can get an ono, or you can get you know a, a sailfish. So yeah, all these, fishes. yeah, all these different fish, right? You could get, but you could get gigantic ones. It's going to take you, you know, four hours to try to pull in. Yeah. Um, so you don't know when you send out mail or, or adwords who's going to be on the other line. It could be a hundred thousand dollar deal, two hundred thousand dollar deal, ten thousand dollar deal, twenty thousand dollar deal. Who knows what, what what type of deals are going to come in? Which is the exciting part about this business. And why I what what you know what we look at the obstacles for people when they go oh I'm I want to get into wholesaling but I don't live in a market that's big I don't live in Phoenix I don't live in you know in Las Vegas or Dallas or whatever but I still want to participate how can I do it well you know what we want to do is basically eliminate those boundaries so there's there's basically five questions that people come up with um, when when they are uh, when they are, are thinking about virtual wholesaling right so the first question and we're going to talk about this is how to pick a market right how to pick a market so can you, can you see that on my screen or no probably uh, not. no on your oh it's just, it's just my notes I swear it's just like that. yeah so how to pick a market then we're going to talk about what is the best way to get leads ASAP right how to get leads ASAP and then, right, so now, what, you know, first off, out of all the markets across the country, how do we know which one's the best? And then how to get leads coming in as fast as humanly possible in the best leads. And then now we get leads coming in. We talk to sellers. What do we say you know, to talk to them to get them to try to figure out which is the cream of the crop, which are the best leads. And now we're talking to a seller, gathering information. Then we got to, you know, kind of figure out, number one, what are the repairs based upon the information they're telling us? Right, and then how do we get comps and then make an accurate offer and then get the contract signed? And then obviously, how do we sell the property? So, how do we do that without looking at the property, without being in the market, without how they're getting on a flight and flying there? You know, there's a lot of obstacles. So, we're going to, you know, go through, real, real, you know, kind of go through. Well, obviously, we can't do the entire training here, which obviously we'd like to do, but the bottom line is we want to basically touch us on, on some key points. So, so uh, Alex, the first question is, you know, how do you pick a market? Well, I'm going to talk about exactly what you need to do when it comes to getting that, you know, that perfect market. And the, actually, the honest truth is there is no perfect market. Uh, a lot of people, when they think about virtual wholesaling, they overlook their local market. But I'm going to show you an exact guidebook a little guidebook that's used uh, by lenders and such to find what markets are hot, what ones are stable, which ones are weak, which ones are improving, and show you exactly where to go to get that for free so you can know exactly what markets are doing what. So that's you can awesome. Say, okay, where am I going to invest to make this you know, worth my while? Right. Uh, that, I mean, so it's literally, literally this guide, right? It's that get, it's a, a guide book. Able to get a guidebook to where they can know and they can be able to pick. So now, let's say in this guidebook, it has the top ten. So and and they they have the top ten in there, and out of that top ten, how do you know how do you know which market do you want to you know out of that top ten? Well, basically the way the guidebook is set up is it looks at all the different MSAs, uh, which are all the different markets around the country, and it gives you. Stats. What, what's it? What's it? Hey, um, what's an MSA? Uh, MSA is a market statistical analysis. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so MSAs are your market statistic uh, or areas, I should say. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and then they'll give you they'll put a breakdown on that so that you can go in and say, okay, um, let's pick one. Uh, Atlanta. What's Atlanta doing? 
and then it'll give you all the different economic breakdowns of, you know, are there big companies coming into the area? Does it look like job growth is on the up? Does it look like new construction is on the up? Is it on the low? And they'll tell you exactly if they believe that market is going to be weak, steady, stable, or uh, strong. Hmm. Who, who better to give you an idea on what a market is than a lender? Yeah. <laughs> the lender is going out there putting their money into these properties. And what they believe, uh, actually what they do is they use this to rate for private mortgage insurance, PMI. Yeah. So they're going to go in and they're going to say, okay, yeah, our risk is going to be this based on this kind of market. So, right. so we can use that data, and as a, as a virtual wholesaler, we can get a good grasp on the market, what, what's considered a hot, hot market, which then we know all, this information is public, so the people can get, gather this information, and investor buyers are going to obviously, if it's a hot market, it's robust, that's where you want to basically you know, uh, you know, build your ground, I guess you could say, or you can build your foundation Absolutely. and start growing. Okay, so that's really good. All right, so the next question people have, you know, now that they, they pick a market and they go, okay, how do I get leads in the door ASAP? What's the best way to get hot leads coming in the door ASAP? Well, we basically have two different ways, right? So, so let's, say, let's say we do this. Let's say we're, let's say we're going to pick um, at random without looking at this list whatsoever. Let's say you live in, you know, uh, in Virginia. I live in Phoenix. So let's say we're going to together and we're going to go um, hit Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Atlanta. Let's call it Atlanta. Whatever. Not, uh, you know, whatever Atlanta. It's hot Atlanta, so I'm not going to go there, but I'll flip the houses there, right? There so if we're going to pick Atlanta, Atlanta's our pick. How would we get leads ASAP in the door in Atlanta fast? Well, there's no real magic to anything. There's two different ways of doing things. You can do online marketing mm -hmm. and offline marketing. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So whatever you would do in your local market, you can do exactly in a virtual market. Absolutely. Right. For online marketing, it's helpful to have a established uh, brand, if you will, that you can go into any market and you can set up shop with Google AdWords, and then you're online like that. And yeah. then you're, you know, then you're advertising, you're putting your word out there, leads are coming in, and you're in business. As far as offline marketing, the best thing to do is, and I'll talk exactly about this, is go in and see exactly what buyers are doing in that market. So yep. there's not a guessing game. You know, a lot of people don't know what a wholesale deal looks like. So, you know, for instance, if I was to say to you, hey, Sean, um, I want, you remember where's Waldo, right? Yeah. If I was to say, hey, Sean, you need to find Waldo, but I'm not going to tell you what he looks like. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to find him too good, would you? Yeah, it's like trying to dig for gold and know what gold looks like, and you got every single rock that comes up and goes, I found gold! And it's like, no, you did. <laughs> well, hey, it's a rock, it's a rock. I right? yeah, know, you don't know. But I'm not even going to tell you what the deal looks like. Right. So a wholesale deal, so a wholesale deal looks like a $100,000 property you can buy for $50,000. A $200,000 property you can buy for $100,000. A $300,000 property you can buy for $150,000. It's a, whole, a true wholesale deal excluding all deal structuring and seller financing and stuff like that, a true wholesale deal has equity and there's a definite easy, uh, you know, e easy calculation from the high comps to the low comps. But anyways, well, so getting leads coming in. So yeah, yeah, so, so the leads are coming in and this is basically by going through, and, and this is very important, the list that I'm going to show you how to pull is going to dictate all of this. Yeah. The list is going to show you where properties are being sold, how much they're being sold for, and to who. And with this list, which you can pull very, very, very inexpensively, you can see exactly what's going on. Then you'll know who to target, which is going to filter down into all our next steps that we're going to talk about. Yeah. And you actually can pull down to the zip code on where the cash transactions are happening in the highest zip code. Now, it's interestingly here in Phoenix, right? is that um, the high cash transaction zip codes, the number one cash transaction, is a 55 and older community zip code area. Wow. Yeah, because a lot of snowbirds are coming in. They're selling their houses across the country. They're moving here, but they're buying cash. You know, oh, so now, interestingly, it is deceptive. Yeah, it is deceptive. So, you know, yes, you can pull these lists. But also, too, you got to really know, you know, you really got to go in and check those and really see if, you know, our investors actually, 
you know, hitting those type of areas, you know, for yeah, sure. Yeah, and obviously it's up there is to look for the repeat cash buyers. The repeat and then cash you buyers. See exactly what they're buying, exactly what they're buying, the square footage of what they're buying, the type of house that they're buying, and the uh, amount um, they're paying per square foot, which will definitely help you yeah. make your offers. So all of that is gold. That's Intel going into a market that increases your success tenfold, right? Because now you know you you know exactly you know a hot market and you know exactly what buyers are buying and you know exactly where buyers are buying, which is important. Exactly. Okay. All exactly. right. So now now we gotta go. Now we now we get leads coming in. So so we're gonna do either online or offline marketing, right? And obviously offline marketing is sending direct mail, either postcards or letters, right? And targeting what in like is there a couple lists you target or um well, you recommend a suggestor. You can go into a zip code and you can see again exactly what's selling and for what and kind of target that exact property or that exact pattern of square footage, that square Find out exactly what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Um, hold on one second. Oh, is that your daughter coming in? No, that's my son, actually. <laughs> he snuck in the room. <laughs> <laughs> he snuck in and he's on his way out. <laughs> oh, that's right. All right. No, no so they do. Kids are great, man. I got yeah. Now they're older now, so they get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah. So basically, what you can do is go in and see who's buying, where they're buying, and by doing that, you can then reverse engineer a wholesale deal by doing that and then target your mailing that way. Right. So that way, you know, when you go into a market, you don't want to just pummel it with mail if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Right. But this is a very strategic way to go in and use that data. Again, it's very easy to retrieve if you know exactly how to pull it, which I'll show you. Right. And, and then you can use that to formulate your list to who you're going to target. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. So, uh, so that gives you that intel, gives you that data, get those. Now, online... Um, is Google AdWords. Google now, AdWords. Yeah. We know that see, it's, you know it's kind of an issue with Google AdWords. You've got you've got um, you know you've got to get the landing page set up correctly, the website set up correctly. You've got to get the um, the uh, the the um, you know you get the, the campaign set up, all that set up, and get all that stuff done, right? So you can uh, you know get leads coming in for Google AdWords. Um, you know, like for, you know, for for me, I use one eight hundred fair offer, so it makes life a lot easier because everything that's all pretty much all set up for you. Um, but getting online is not as difficult when you have tools like On Carrot, which is a great website tool, and uh, and and stuff like that. So that's a great way to get leads in coming in automatically. Okay, so now now a person they um, they know the market. They know the area of what they're buying, what, what's going on in the market, what cash buyers are buying, what areas, what zip codes they're buying in. Now we know we get leads coming in. Now we, we're, we have, let's say we have them set up in Podio or some sort of lead uh, CRM, and now the leads are coming in, right? How does the conversation look on the phone with the seller? So you're, you're now, you know, we're, we're, remember, we're going to be marketing Atlanta. So we get leads that coming in from Atlanta and the guys, and we get a hot one on the line and they say, hey, listen, I just inherited this property. You know, I don't really do any work to it. You know, I don't want to go through the listing process because I've got to fix it up. You know, what can you guys do, right? And right. we're here, right, in our market, yeah. and that's in Atlanta. How do, we, how do we talk to them and handle that? Well, basically, we're going to just let them know. I mean, we're definitely interested in buying your property. Um, we're going to try to get to know exactly what they're looking to sell the property for, and then we're going to basically tell them the process. So basically, you're going to let us know what what you're looking to sell for. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send you an agreement based on that, right? Uh, based on what we're able to come to an agreement on. And then the next step is we're going to get our funding partners or our money people to go ahead and verify exactly what you and I just talked about. Right. Okay, cool. So so now and then so now when you're doing that and the and the seller's telling you about the property and they're telling your situation and bed and bath and square footage and this, how do you get into the condition, like the repair estimates and condition area? Well see this is interesting because a lot of people kind of get hung up on that standpoint. Yeah. And if we're not looking at the property 
it's really not up to us. You know, repairs are very subjective. Mm -hmm. There are certain people that come in and are going to put in a whole bunch of money into a property and make it look like the There are some people who are just going to put it off to fix to make it livable because they want to rent it. Right. So the key is it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it's subjective. So That's a, good point. Uh, a, really, a really good way to go about doing it is to look at the average um, – square footage that people are buying properties for. Mm -hmm. So then you can go in and kind of make that guesstimate there that the wholesale price is being sold at this type of square footage. So let's say a thousand square foot house, after we look at a bunch of different properties in the area, is selling for, well, say your market, what would you say? Uh, $85 a square foot, $115 a square foot? What would you put that at? Yeah, typically... Um... Yeah, eighty-five. I mean, it could go all the way up to three hundred bucks a foot if it's in a in wow. a Scottsdale or Paradise Valley or a higher or a higher house. But typically, a standard style, you know, house that's fifteen hundred square feet, three bed, two bath, stuff like that, it's probably going for between ninety to one hundred and twenty bucks a foot. Okay. Okay. So then, as a wholesale or retail. Um, that depending on the location, that would be a wholesale price. But for people now, I mean, because think about it, we're in, you know, we're 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 thinking about Atlanta theoretically, right? Yeah. In Atlanta, how would we then now determine repairs on a property? Now we're talking to the seller, we're gathering information. It hasn't been updated. It needs work. You know, we had a tenant in there for years. You know, nothing's been done to it. It was built in 1962. You know, how, what how we how do we come up with like a repair? Or an idea of repairs, or 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 what are we? How we, what are we looking for? Comps, you know. Well, we're, yeah, we're basing it off the square footage of the properties that have sold. So, so okay, so what we're taking is the low the low comps and the low right. square footage in the area, and that's our that's right. our baseline of wholesale properties. Right. Exactly. Okay. Gotcha. Exactly. So you can look and see, okay, that each of these properties sold for X, and that averages out to say eighty dollars a square foot. Yeah. On the low side. So if you know that, if you're an offering around seventy dollars a square foot, you're probably okay. <laughs> right, right. I got you. Because you'll be, you'll yeah. be, you'll be below essentially wholesale. Exactly. And and, and here, and guys, here's here's a base way to look at it. Let's say we were going to look for cars that we wanted to flip for profit. Okay. And we had all the cars out there, and all you know, and, and we had one specific make and model, and it was a Range Rover Sport 2010, whatever. And you look at all the Range Rover Sports, you're going to have a high side, right? The Range Rover Sports is selling for X, and then Range Rover Sports are selling for the low side. So we know that the lower numbers are obviously a wholesale pricing, and then the higher numbers are basically the retail pricing of the market. So if we can buy it at the wholesale and sell it at the retail, then obviously we can make a profit. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is, is instead of, you know, for houses, you know, we, we can't compare a Range Rover to a, you know, Infiniti QX56. You can't do that, right? Because they're two different cars. Same thing with houses. It has to be a similar car for similar car, and it has to be a, you know, a similar house to similar house. So we're looking for similar houses in the area and looking for that disparity between the low number and the high number. And then we, that's where we can come in and negotiate a low number, line it up, contract the low number, and then flip it at the high number um, in the uh, in the market. So um, so so the best for so for repairs, they're telling us information is basically get an understanding of where they are in a price per square foot, and then you would then back out. Would you back out like eight to ten bucks a foot, twenty bucks a well, foot? Just to start out, that square footage number is a good idea. Uh, in my market, twenty dollars, twenty-five dollars a square foot in repairs is, you know, is a is a is a fair bet. So right. if you know so, we got a thousand square foot house, twenty-five dollars, twenty-five thousand dollars in repairs. Yeah, so that's 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 pretty good. So you can you can do twenty-five bucks a foot, so that's twenty-five thousand dollars. So so now if you have, let's say, the low comps are going for eighty-five bucks a foot, and you're twenty-five dollars a foot, you know, you know what I mean, you know, it is. Now, now you're done. Down, that means you're offering sixty bucks a foot, right? right. And now you're offering sixty bucks a foot. Is that where now you your offer comes in, or are you backing out from their profit price per square well, foot? Well, <laughs> you can very easily. I mean, one thing to remember when you're looking at sold prices, if they're real wholesale deals, they don't include assignment fees. HUD, you know, a contract is a contract. So let's say 
somebody bought a property for sixty thousand dollars. That doesn't include the ten thousand dollar assignment fee that could have been in there, right? right? So you got to keep that in mind too. So assignment fees kind of hide from uh, from the public's view there, which really makes it a little interesting trying to find out what exactly that property did sell for. But if you stay with those numbers there, at like say sixty thousand, you know that that's going to be a good baseline number because even people are probably paying more because there's probably wholesale fees and things included in there. Okay, so so to dumb this down and make it you know stupid simple for someone like me that I can understand this right, <laughs> is that you know, let's say let's say you go into a market and you're looking at comps and you've got stuff that's selling for 120, 130 bucks a foot, and you've got the low side average is selling for say 85 bucks a foot, right? Yeah. And the house hasn't been anything done, so you could knock off 25 bucks a foot, which is now getting you to down to about 60 bucks a foot. Right, yeah. and then you have to knock off profit. Well, if the house is a thousand square feet, ten bucks a foot, there's a ten thousand dollar profit. If if you want to make twenty thousand, now you get a twenty thousand dollar, you know, twenty bucks a foot. So now instead of uh, you know eighty five bucks a foot, now you're down to say forty bucks a foot on the property times a thousand. Now you're off of forty thousand dollars, you know, uh, for you know for the property to to essentially make now. Um, and uh, it opens up for negotiation from there if the seller's going to take it and stuff like that. But um, if but but here's the thing, and I want and I want to you know make it clear when you're talking to a seller is that we're trying to get them to tell us a number first, right? Absolutely. If they don't tell us a number, then we kind of have to go look at the comps and go through this rigmarole, you know, to come up with a number. Now, obviously, the first rule of thumb in any type of negotiation, whoever comes up with the first number first loses. Right. Right. Yeah. So if you are going to come up with the first number, and the second rule of thumb is, if you have to come up with the first number, it better be shockingly low, right? right. So if you know forty thousand for me, I'd offer probably twenty-five or thirty, and they'd probably freak out on the other end. Oh my gosh, they're freaking out, twenty-five or thirty. But guess what? Their expe expectation of wanting one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for the property instantly changes the minute I say that number. So it's interesting. I was talking to my, my guys, and uh, the house is worth 180, and uh, and he had to name a number, so he came out for an offer like at 60 grand. And he said the people about dropped out of their seats, their mouths dropped out of their seats. But then they negotiated up to 90, you know, on the property. So we still got it at 50 cents on the dollar, which is uh, which is pretty cool. All right. So um, so making offers. So the goal is the leads coming in, talk to them on the phone, right? Um, have a simple system to make offers. And then get them to buy in on the number, right? Yes. So get them to buy in the number. And then once you buy in the number, then you go to contract. Right. So right. then you would, um, you could DocuSign a contract. Um, DocuSign, you could do mail. There's pretty cool things you can do with Odeo. That's pretty complicated. But, you know, you can make it easy. Good old snail mail works. Yep. You can mail. You can email a contract over. They can sign it. They can scan it, email it back. You can do doc, DocuSign is where it's a service where it's a digital signature on the contract for, from, from that. So you get digital signature and both sides get copies of it, which is really cool. It's what we do. Um, all right, so now you have that. You have an offer. You get it locked up on the phone. So now you talk to them. You've you've looked at your and you're going to go way more in detail at Extreme Freedom about about looking at the comps and what to look for and the, finding that disparity between the low and the high comps and making your offers and stuff like that. So um, we're giving a, you know, basically a, a general overview. So now when it comes now you now you've locked up this property in Atlanta, right? And now we've got to sell it, but we don't got a buyer's list there. We don't have an email buyer's list. How do we sell a property there? Well, and, and how do we get how do we get pictures of the property? Okay, well I can I'll give you a uh, virtual uh, site that you can go to where they will go and take pictures for you. Nice problem solved. Cool. <laughs> um, the other thing is, as far as you saying we don't have a buyer's list, we actually do, and that's what this whole uh, this whole premise what we've been talking about online is is the list I show you how to pull that anybody can pull just by plugging in this criteria will give you your buyers because it's going to bring up all the repeat buyers, the people that have been buying properties. And a lot of these people are buying properties sight unseen you know, at auctions and things like that. So yeah. it's as simple as going in and, and um, you can even pick up these people because they're big companies or whatever they might be. You can go in and contact them with a letter. It's, it's selling a property is the easy part. If you have a deal, 
you have to understand how valuable that is. Because mm -hmm. he who has the deal wins right now. Yeah. If you've got a deal, you can make the rules on you know what what if it's a real good deal, a solid deal. What somebody's going to pay for it is completely up to you. Yeah, because it's it's a seller's market, right? I mean, it's, it's, a, right. it's a it's a seller's market. A buyer's market means there's tons of inventory, and now buyers can pick and choose the properties they want. And a seller market means the inventory is low, and now the buyers are fighting other buyers to get to because the inventory is low to get those smoking deals. So currently, we're in a seller's market right here where inventory nationally is low, and that's why you have these robust and hot markets, and that's why you can pick these different markets and be able to target them. And, and in those markets, because the inventory is low, you can go in there and uh, you lock up a deal that's a good deal, holy, you'll have no problem selling it. I mean, literally, you can send out, you know, a, a letter, a flyer with a property information, your information, price on it, and send it out to, you know, several hundred buyers that have bought repeat properties in that market, and you have it sold probably instantly, and you'll have a bunch of other people calling that you can get their email addresses to put them on your, uh, on a buyer's hey, list. Chris, don't forget about Craigslist. Yeah, that, that, that's just drive me out. That, that's, you know, yeah, yeah, you got Craigslist, <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah, so good deals are out there. You bring the good deals to the market, you will sell them. It's not a, it's not something to be worried about. Right, right, right. That's killer. Cool. All right. So, um, so you'll be extreme freedom. We're gonna have you speak, and we're gonna, you're gonna be talking about in detail these uh, five, how to pick a market. You're going to go deep into that. Uh, what's the best way to get leads ASAP? You're going to talk about the two different. You're going to talk about your letter. You're going to talk about your postcard. You're going to talk about the list to mail. You're going to talk about um, estimating repairs, kind of show that. You're also going to talk about you know, uh, making the deal over the phone, what they're going to say, the script involved to basically talk to, the, talk to them and, and come up with that number, and then how to sell the property in lightning speed. Um, and kind of getting into that detail specifically on, on, on how that works. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be killer. So the, the, the whole purpose uh, of that to teach people is for them to walk out of the room and realize that the entire U.S., right, even if you're watching this and you're in Canada right now, you can do this virtually in the United States and flip deals, right? So if you're in Canada and you want to do deals here in the U.S., it's wide open learning what he's going to be talking about. It's going to be uh, incredibly uh, uh, valuable for you to be there and learn the things and uh, and, and be part of, the, of part of that because of uh, the um, the knowledge that you can get that literally open up the entire U.S. to you to go out and get deals, which is killer. So it's going to be awesome. The world, the world is your market. The world, well, not the, not the world. It'd be tough to flip in Italy. To I, flip where? In, in in Italy. Maybe. I, yeah. <laughs> I always call it Italy, Italy, because uh, I was watching this movie and this guy from Brooklyn called it Italy. <laughs> he always called it Italy. <laughs> so, um, anyway, that's uh, I digress. Anyway, so um, Italy is uh, would be difficult to flip houses there. All right. So Alex Youngblood, and now he's also is going to talk about a story um, and what he's been doing and think deals he's been doing right now. And he'll be there talking about uh, you know killer ways to get on market ASAP, um, and it's going to be a blast. So any last words before your kids come and tackle you? They're they're ready to come get me. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting you. Man. Yeah, it'll be awesome. All right, man. Have a good evening. Thank you.